Welcome everyone and thank you for attending today's webcast, AutoCAD Plant 3D 2018, adding custom parametric components. Our presenter today is Rick France. He's a solutions engineer with Hagerman and Company. Before we get started, I'll let you know that you're in listening only mode. If you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the question panel on the right hand side of your screen and Rick will address them at the end of the presentation. As we close down the session today, you'll be prompted to fill out a survey, and we do ask that you take a few moments to fill that out for us. Um, this webcast qualifies for one AIA continuing education credit. If you would like to receive this credit, you could leave your AIA number in the comments uh, question of our survey. Additionally, all registrants will receive a follow-up email containing a link for the recording of this presentation. And uh, with that, I will hand things over to Rick. All right, well, good afternoon or morning for you, I guess, if you're on Central Time. Uh, I'm, it's, it's afternoon for me. But uh, we're going to start here and take a look at some uh, things you can do with the nozzle catalog here in Plant 3D. So I'm using Plant 3D 2018, and I am assuming you can see my screen now. I did just turn it on, so unless Ashley alerts me that she's not seeing it. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on with this. Yeah, we can uh, see one it. Of the, one of the things I'm going to be uh, doing here is involve some uh, files that are called Python scripts. And so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, at the end of this uh, webcast, I'm going to show you a link where you can download the files and not have to recreate them yourselves if you want to uh, do what I'm doing here in this webcast with the... Um, nozzles and putting on some slip on flange nozzles so that way you can download it and there'll be some readme files in it that will give you instructions that of the steps I'm going through on installing it on your system uh, but we'll show you that file here, there at the end and give you a little more detail about that for now what I want to show you as you can see I've got a tank and a pump here on my screen and when I zoom in on the tank here, you can see these nozzles. I've just put them at an angle where you can see them nice and easy. Just the weld neck flange is on there. And if you looked at the nozzle catalog, you can see here I've just went ahead and sorted to the nozzles in the catalog that are flanged. Every single one of them that come out of the box are weld neck flanges. Uh, you do not have any slip on flanges or any other type of flange available out of the box. So what we're going to do is add a slip on flange to the nozzle. Now if I go over here to the spec editor, because I don't like to uh, let you think that I've done anything out of the ordinary, my spec for the project here is I'm using a carbon steel 150 spec. I have already added to it a slip-on flange to my spec. Now that flange was not necessary to be in the spec in order for me to add it to the nozzle catalog, but for me to pipe to it I needed a slip-on flange or else it would just put in a weld neck flange whenever I added a piece of pipe to it, that nozzle. The other thing I've done by adding the slip-on flange is I went to the priority use and I have set that up to where my slip-on flange is my number one priority so that it will default to a slip-on flange. So I've already done that in the spec. Back here, what we're going to do in the catalog editor here in a minute, let me get back to here so it's ready for me. What I'm doing to get those nozzles in, into the catalog, I want to be able to use a parametric nozzle. And unfortunately, since there's not a slip on flange already in here, if I went to like the, to create a new component, my only options here when I look at the flange nozzles that are out of the box, my only option is the weld neck flange because that's all that's there. So that is the issue. I can't even create one to add that slip on flange. Now one thing I want to point out here that's going to come back to play later. Notice when I change to flange, I see the pipe flange here. If I change it to a plain end type here, I see my plain end types, my bevel end types, which are the same as my plain, but uh, here's socket weld one. So I have different, when I change the end type, I have different ones available. When I'm on undefined, I see, well, 
for some reason undefined it's not showing me anything when I go back to it uh, but the different ones are there for whatever you're going to use for the end type so first let me show you here what I'm what's going to be involved here this is called a uh, this right here is a Python script that I have pre-written and this is these are the files that you can download at the end when I point you to it plus there'll be some additional there's a couple of different options but this is a Python script it's just an ASCII text file I already have it open here so that we can kind of show you what's involved in this script file Basically, a Python script is divided into three sections. You can see I've kind of divided it up here. There's my import section. This is my metadata section. And this is my shape script section. Right here, and starting with the import section, and I, let me see if I could. I eh, better not do that. Hopefully it's not too small on the screen. Uh, it won't fit on my screen if I make the text any larger. But most of these are pretty standard ones that I want to enter in here, all except for one of them. So, for instance, any time I, I do a Python script, I always include the math script. Uh, that you're just importing. These are other Python scripts that you're importing that are there out of the box. So this is a uh, one for the math script. This is so I can do mathematic computation when I define the nozzle down there in the in the final portion. Uh, this one here is for doing uh, pipe, any type of piping type of information that I want to put into my script. I'm importing the ones out of there so I can put my uh, my port points and things like that. This is for a primitive objects, such as a cylinder or a cone. I'm going to be using a cylinder down here to create my pipe, so that's how I can pull that information in here. This one here is a standard on any type of custom script that you need to import. So those four of these are pretty much standard ones, and they do go in sequence, so they have to be in the sequence that I have in here. Uh, the one that I did that's unique here is this one right here, and that one is the script for the slip-on flange, because I don't want to reinvent the wheel and have to create a whole new slip-on flange. I want to use the one out of the box, so that's the one for the slip-on flange. If you were to look at the nozzle the Python script out of the box that came for the nozzle that's in there out of the box, they're using the one for the weld neck flange. Now just to show you how I knew which one to use, if I came down here to, we'll go back over here to the piping and fittings one catalog, and I'm going to look up the Slip the flanges that are slip on fl actually I don't even need to do that. I can't create new component here. So we'll look for a um, flanges and Down here you can see all the different flanges and right here a little bit further There's the slip on flange right here and you'll notice the text there right below flange That's in italics. You've probably seen this before and wondered what it was that is the name of the Python script that is used to create this flange. Now there are, I know this one's a slip-on flange from the slip-on right there. You'll see there's another one here that's a slip-on flange, but that one is the oval slip-on flange. So I'm not wanting to use the oval one. I'm wanting to use just a round slip-on flange. So that is the name of the Python script that I'm using and I needed to import in order to create that flange. So back here in the Python script again, that was the one I've imported right here. So that's kind of what's going on in this first part, this first section, which is your import section. The second section, which is called the metadata section, this is where I'm defining uh, basically my parameters that I'm going to be using. This is where I tell it what parameters I'm going to be registering with this Python script into Plant 3D. So the first thing that happens here is I have to activate it, and I'm going to assign a group called Straight Nozzle Nozzle. Again, where that group came from, if I come back here to the Nozzle catalog, hit Create New Component, 
You can see here the piping components using the straight nozzle. And you can see at the top here, these, this is the group name for each of these Python scripts that were assigned to it. Now, I'm not going to use mine as a pipe or a sleeve, so all I'm going to do is assign it to the straight nozzle in the nozzle group. They're two different groups, and by doing, and I do that by declaring here what group it, def it is defined for. After that, I'm defining the first port in types as flange. I'm giving it a nozzle slip on flange as my short tooltip name. Where that comes into play, this right here is the short description. And then the long description also will show up in other areas, so that I've got that one defined. Then what my units are going to be, this one's going to be in inches, and the fact that I have two ports. Now, I have to have two ports on a nozzle because the first port is where it connects to the piece of equipment, the tank or whatever other piece of equipment it's connecting to, and the second port is the location of the flange. So that's a, a basically a common group that you would need for an entire nozzle. And then you define the group dimensions, and that's what these last few parameters are, the dimensions that I'm going to use to define this nozzle. Now, I've named mine basically exactly the same that they did in uh, Plant 3D for other nozzles. So I've got a D-length, which is my outside diameter of my pipe, an L-length, which is the length of my nozzle. And I use the same tooltip names as, as they did in, in Plant 3D, which I'll show you in a minute. And then the last ones is these right here are the dimensions needed for a slip-on flange when I call this particular function. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Back here, looking at any old nozzle, let me just switch it. I'm on a nozzle catalog to a flange nozzle. And I'll just pick this one here, go over to the sizes. So here's the D dimension for the dimension diameter of the pipe. Let's look at one that's got a little bit better. Let's get one that's in inches. All right, so here's the D dimension for the diameter of the pipe. Looking at an eight inch one for the OD of the pipe, the L dimension for the length, and I'll explain why it's a negative nine here in a minute. And the rest of these are dimensions that it needs for a well deck flange right here. This one is the well neck flange on this side, and as you can see, this one happens to have two, not two different flanges on it because it's a more of a pipe sleeve, but it can be used as a nozzle. And then down here are the ones for this, the other side. So those are all the dimensions it needs for a well neck flange. And you notice for the flange they used L1B1 D12. I just followed the same sequence for the naming convention. When I put my cursor on it, it will tell me that that's the length of the flange at port one. And it gives me some other information about what it, if it's set to a negative number, like negative two, what it means and things like that. The dimensions I needed for the flange, I got back here on the slip-on flange itself. So returning to the pipes and fittings catalog, looking at the, flan the slip-on flange, and I'm going to go ahead and narrow it down to a 150 class, and here's 1 to 24 inch, 150 pound slip-on flange. So here's the dimensions that it's needing for the slip-on flange, which are L, B, D1, D2, D3, and I. And you can see the dimensions over here. So it needs all six of these dimensions. I need to send the software that same six dimensions in order to create this flange. So basically, if you remember on theirs, they named them L1, B1, and things like that. So I followed the same sequence in mine. I'm calling it L1, which is the equivalent of L, B1, which is B1, and so on. And D11 is D1, D12 is D2, and so on. So I'm just using the same exact terminology they used in their, no their nozzle, and I'm making sure I have all the dimensions, the six dimensions that I need for that flange. That's pretty much all I need to declare for my nozzle at this point. Now notice the I dimension here. The I dimension is something that's kind of unique in Plant 3D. It's not something, if I pulled up a flange chart, you know, uh, 
for the different dimensions on a flange, I pretty much can get every, let me click on the eight inch again, I could get every single one of these dimensions off of any flange chart. The eye dimension though is a unique one because it's showing the port connection there of, how, of the insertion point in there. That's kind of unique. That's not going to be on a normal flange chart. So that's one that I'm either going to have to calculate or in my case what I'm going to do since I'm only going to be creating two flanges in this webcast, I just got the eye dimension here of 1.59 for the 8 inch and I went over here to the 6 inch, it's 1.4 so I'm just going to use the exact same dimensions they already have programmed in to slip on flanges out of the box. So I, instead of calculating it out I came up with that particular dimension that way. So basically back in the script, that's going to declare what I'm going to be, what I'm going to need for my dimensions. The last part here, which is called the shape script section, this is where I define the actual nozzle it's going to be creating. I'm going to basically using this section right here to bring in the dimensions that I want. So first you've got to define what you're going to call it. The name of this definition has to match the name of my script file. So they are identical. After that, I have basically the dimensions that I'm going to set for my uh, default dimensions for creating this in, in Plant 3D, the first initial one. The S dimension here is basically my main object. So all any definition is going to have an S dimension. That's the main object. You can see I'm using it down here in a couple of places to set the port points. And it's being used in the cylinder and things and, and my flange call out there. So that's the main object. The rest of these are the same dimensions right here or the same call outs from up here. So I'm, here I'm setting D as my 8 inch di OD. My L is the negative 9. Again, I'll explain that in just a second. And then L1, B1, what those dimensions are going to be. So I'm setting an initial setting for the very first one to an 8 inch diameter slip on flange. The last part of this declaration here is this star star KW and that is necessary in all Python scripts and it's basically for passing uh, keyworded variable links of arguments to a named function because I'm going to be using a named function down here. I got to be able to pass that information so that allows me to do that. It's just something that's a standard. So pretty much these right here, this S and this KW back here is just standard in pretty much all um, Python scripts. Even if they're not necessary in a Python script, it doesn't hurt to include it. So I always include it. This right here are the variables I'm setting. So that's basically what the variables are there. Right here you'll see I've got the nozzle section and the pour point section. Anything that starts with a pound sign or hashtag I guess is the current term for it. Anything that starts with a hashtag is a comment. So it's basically ignored in the, and when it compiles the script. It's just for me to be able to see what I'm doing in each section because this is a pretty simple script right here. There's not a lot to it, but I could do a very complex one if I wanted to. And if in doing so, it's, it helps to kind of put them in sections where you can see what's happening in each section. So what's happening here is this is basically a variable I'm setting. And I'm saying this pipe is a cylinder one of the primitive objects that I'm going to be calling here and it needs to know the radius, the height, and the orientation. After that I'm also rotating at 90 degrees because it's going to be rotated 90 degrees to the piece of equipment it's connected to. Initially I can change that based on how I set up that nozzle but that's so that it understands this is rotated not and not parallel. So I'm setting up my pipe and how it's going to be set up. Then I'm set. Then I'm going to set to the flange variable. I'm calling that Python script that came out of the box, and I'm going to set the variables for it. Now in it, 
L, it's looking for L, B, D1, D2, and D3, not L1, B1, D11. So I'm telling it L equals L1, B equals B1, and so forth, all the way down through there. So I'm telling it which one of my variables I want it to use to create that flange. The last two parts of creating the nozzle here, in a script this simple, they're probably unnecessary. I could, I could leave those out, it would create the nozzle just fine, but it's a good programming habit because if it was in a very complicated script, it's these are things you would want to do. The pipe basically unites with the flange, making it one object. And that's kind of like a union in AutoCAD. You're union, unioning the two 3D solids together so that they're one object. So I'm uniting the flange, and then once you've created that union, you erase the one you don't need, which in this case is the flange, because the pipe is the one that got the union. So I erase the flange, that clears up memory. Like I said, in this one, probably not necessary, but in a more complex script, it really does save a lot, it makes your scripts a lot more efficient. So my habit is just do it all the time. It didn't cost me anything in one this simple. So that creates the nozzle, and then the last portion here is my port points. So I'm setting port one, to this uh, dimension right here, which is basically 0, 0, 0 of the nozzle. And then I'm setting port 2 using the L dimension to where that's going to be. So that's where that's port 2 is where that plus sign is going to be. When I, when I use the nozzle and I hit the little plus sign, that's where it's going to draw and connect the other flange up to this particular nozzle. And that's pretty much all I need in the script itself. Each script requires four pongs, or four images. They just happen to be pongs, PNG files. So if I look over here, you can see I've got, here's my script, and I've got four PNG files here. The difference between them, they all have to have the same name as the script, and then an underscore with the size of the PNG file, and there needs to be four of them that are 32 bit, uh, 32 by 32. If you looked at the size down here of this one, it's 32 by 32 are the dimensions. Then I've got a 64 by 64 one, a 200 by 200 one. Those three do not have any dimensions. And the last one's 640 by 640, which has dimensions. So it's obvious that's the one that's going to show up right here. It's the 640 by 640. Very simple way that I created those particular pongs. I just made a drawing. So I have a drawing here that I could put a, it's just a piece of pipe with a slip-on flange on it. I added AutoCAD dimensions. I found they look better, the AutoCAD dimensions, when I use a conceptual, uh, whatever that's called, can't even think of it right now. <laughs> but when I'm using the, the conceptual one, it's, the dimensions show up better because when I do realistic or something like that, it actually the dimensions hollow out and stuff, so that keeps everything nice. And look, basically just did a screenshot of it, pulled it up in Windows Paint, and made it the sizes I needed, and then I did a, the next screenshot with the dimensions removed to create the other three and just sized them to the 64, the 200, and the 32. So basically that's how I created the, that, those Pongs. So I did them using AutoCAD and Paint. All right, after that, we're gonna, um, to those, where those files need to be is determined by your content folder. So looking in my spec editor, if I go to tools, modify shared content folder, this is the location that's going to control where those files need to be placed in order for the software to use it. So in mine, I'm using F Program Data 2018 Plant as my shared content folder, but that's where you can look if you don't know where it is, where to find this location. Now that's not, it needs to be in a subfolder of this, or actually two subfolders of this location, but first you gotta know the location before you can uh, put it in the subfolders. So that's the place it's, it's gonna, it needs to be placed. And at this point, I'm going to close the spec editor because to register this Python script here with AutoCAD, Plant 3D, I can't have the spec editor open.
I can have it open, but spec editor won't see it until it'll only recognize this once it's registered after I've closed it and reopened it. So I might as well go ahead and close it at that point. So basically, this is the folder plus one level deep of CPAC common because your custom scripts have to be under CPAC's common. So the first part of this location is where that shared content folder is and then CPAC common folder. I go one deeper and in it I need a folder that is not here out of the box called custom scripts. So I need to create that folder. To save me some typing I have got me a little file here to where I can just copy and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and copy from this file here and create a new subfolder under CPAC common called custom scripts. That's where I need to place this. By the way, everything I'm showing you here it will be in the readme file of that file you downloaded. So it's not going to be something you have to remember or watch this a hundred times to see. I've got step by step in that readme file. So inside custom scripts here, which I've already got a link built up to me, that's where I need to place the Python script itself and the four pongs. So I'm going to go ahead and just move these over to custom scripts and place them right there. Once I've got them placed there, I can register these with AutoCAD Plan 3D. The way I do that is back here, I just have to have a drawing open. It doesn't have to be this drawing. It could just be any drawing opened in Plan 3D. And I need to register it with these three commands right here. One right after another. I'm just going to copy and paste them in there, but the first one's called Play It Register Custom Scripts. Then I run an ARCS command and a test ACP script. And notice the test ACP script has the name of my Python script. So I'm going to take that. I'm just going to copy it right into my command prompt down here. I'm going to hit Escape to make sure I'm not in the command. Paste it. I'm going to flip screen, and it's not wanting to flip screen, so let me minimize plant. And there's the flip screen, and you can see where each command ran, and I have no error messages. That's important. Make sure after you run these three commands that you have no error messages. Now, I didn't have to hit enter or anything because I actually copied this line here also, which gave me an extra enter. But if I just copied these three, I would have had to hit enter at the end of that last, that test is going to have it actually run. But right here, you can see all three commands ran. There's no error messages. So I'm good to go. At this point, before I can add it to the catalog, I need to close the AutoCAD Plant 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. Now, while I open the spec editor back up, ah, it opened up pretty quick, faster than I expected. Uh, let me go ahead and point out that what happened when I registered it in this custom scripts folder is it created some additional files. Created this PYC file, the XML, this script group XML and the two variant files. Those were created once I registered it. As long as all those files were created, I'm good to go. And they, if I would have had any error messages, all those files would not have been created. Usually what I've noticed, if there's an error message, it creates the PYC file, but none of the XML or the variant files. And that's another signal that something went wrong if that happened. But in our case, it read the script file, created all the files I needed. And I'm going to come back over here in the spec editor and open up my nozzle catalog. The nozzle catalog is located in that same CPAC common file that I created the custom scripts in. It's in the fold, this folder right before that custom scripts and it's called nozzlecatalog.act. So I'll open that back up, and here it is. And the first thing I'm going to show you is if I hit create new component here, there's a little bug that Autodesk is aware of that I want to point that out first. Notice here I see all these different graphics down here. If I go all the way to the right, there's that nozzle that I just created the Python script for. If I change my primary end type 
to flange. Remember earlier I said I was going to be coming back and pointing something out, and this is what I was referring to. Notice I see my nozzle I created, but nothing else that's out of the box. Everything else out of the box, there was one other flange there for the well neck nozzle. It does not appear right here. If I go to the plane or the beveled, nothing. You still, if you remember, there was a couple of graphics here. They're gone. That's a little bit of a bug that's here out of the box. So I need to fix that first. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. What's happening here is in the Python script itself, notice my first import endpoint types is set to in types with a lowercase t. Unfortunately, Plant 3D is case sensitive and it's looking for an uppercase T there. However, the Python script, if I make that a uppercase T in the Python script, the Python script will bomb out. It'll error and it will not create my files that I needed. I would have got some error messages. So the Python script compiler has to have a lowercase T here. But Plant 3D needs an uppercase T. And where that's controlled in Plant 3D is this script group XML file here. So basically, you could open up this with Notepad. I have a little program here I use called Foxe for doing XML files. That's what I'm opening it up into. And I need to tell it that this is an uppercase T for both sides of the end types right there. And that's the whole issue. Like I said, Autodesk is aware of this issue and it's supposed to be fixed in an upcoming release, but I have no idea when that would be, uh, that it's going to be fixed. But at this time, you have to fix it manually. You can either fix it like that, or you can right click and edit this in Notepad and fix it in Notepad. Either one will work. Once that's fixed, I can open this back up in a split spec editor, catalog editor, open the nozzle catalog. And now when I hit create new component, if I change this to a flange connection, it finds the ones out of the box as well as mine. And all the others are working also. So if I look at bevel or socket weld or any other, they're now back there because I fixed that to an uppercase T. And I apologize for that. I hate having to show bugs in a webcast, but that happens to be the way this one works at this time. All right, so I'm going to pick my straight nozzle that I created. You can see the Python script name there. The short description probably shows up a little better if I pick the other one for now that I defined for it and everything. Got my primary end type uh, as a flange, my short description. I'm going to use the same thing they use out of the box, which is nozzle flanged. So I'm just copy and paste that in there. I'm using imperial units. And I'm going to go ahead, since my default one was an 8 inch, I'm going to go ahead and set my size to an 8 inch right there. Once I have that set, I'm going to hit create, and it's going to create my nozzle. And now you can see where it's using different, another one, that 200 by 200 icon. So that it'll work with my other slip on flanges that I'm going to use, got my um, spec. I'm going to set it to raised face, 150 pound. You can fill out as much information as you want to. I'm not going to fill out any more information than what they have out of the box with the other out of the box nozzles. One that has to be filled out here is my lung description family. So I'm going to set my lung description family to a nozzle slip on flange, raised face, 150 ASME B16.5. The compatible standard is not necessary, but since it's in all the ones out of the box, I'm going to go ahead and put my ASME B16.5 in there. You can see where it's pulled in the nozzle, the short description I had. Everything else is filled out. That's pretty much all I have to have. The only thing required right here is that long description family, uh, family right there. Everything else you can fill out however you need to. Go over here to the sizes tab. You can see my eight inch one is here. I'm going to set my matching pipe ID to 8.625. I'm going to go ahead and tell it all ports have the same properties so that both sides of my pipe get the, remember there are two ports. It has 
0.625 set to both sides of the pipe. And for my lung description size, again, I'm just going to copy this right here so I don't have to type it, but it's basically the same thing as my family with the 8-inch nominal diameter in there. Again, the rest of this you can fill out as much as you want. And it pulled in from that Python script all the dimensions that I had set in there. Now, the reason I use the negative 9 here in the Python script. Basically, if you look at any nozzle out of the box, they're all using negative nine. I'm going to go ahead and save the catalog so you can see that. If I pick one of these others, let me go to a short description nozzle flanged. All right, so if I pick any one of these, you can see negative nine for the L dimension. What the negative nine tells it is if I made it a positive nine, then that nozzle would be locked to a nine inch length and it wouldn't change. It's got to have some kind of nozzle length in there. I could have used negative 6 or negative 12. really didn't matter on that part. I just did negative 9 since that's what they did on all the others. But by making it a negative number, that allows it when we are in Plant 3D, if we tell it the nozzle length is 6 inches or 3 inches or 12 inches, that's what it's going to use. The negative not number tells it, use whatever I set and plant. If I do a positive number there, it's locked to that positive number, and I cannot reset it on the plant side. So that is the point of that negative 9. So that I can find that nozzle I was working on, let me go back to raised face. All right, so there's the slip-on flange that we just finished adding in there. And I've got the entire 8-inch one in there. I'm going to add one more size because I needed to be able to show you on the pump. So I'm going to add another size here. This will be 6.625. It's going to be a 6, uh, actually it's a 6 inch six for the nominal diameter. And this will be 6.625. I'm going to go ahead and put in my long, my description size there as a 6 inch nozzle. I just still had it in my clipboard. And then I need to put in my dimensions over here. You can see everything that is required. So you're going to have to create this nozzle for each one that's required. By the way, I want this to be both ports. So I needed to check that. So the dimension here for this one, let me grab my chart over here. All right, well, the D dimension, of course, is the pipe OD. I didn't have to look at my chart for that one. My L dimension, negative 9, just like they've been doing. And here's my flange sizes. So this one is a 1.56 L1 dimension, as you can see by my diagram here. The B1 being 1 inch. The D11 is 11 inch for the OD of the flange. 6.72 for the ID. 7.56, and then that I dimension that I'm copying from the one out of the box is 1.4. I'll go ahead and hit Save the Catalog, and now I've got both a 6-inch and 8-inch nozzle. They've both been added to it. I'm good to go on the spec side, unless I want to add additional sizes. You can add as many sizes as you want. You just need to know those dimensions. So we're going to go ahead and close the nozzle catalog and open plant back up. I also don't need that open anymore, so we'll close it. So back in plant, now that I've added it to the nozzle catalog, it's as simple as just changing the nozzle size on that tank. And so we'll open up our nozzle drawing again. Once it decides to let me, that it's finished opening. And I'm going to just zoom in here so you can get a nice good view. So right here, I've got an 8-inch weld neck. I'm going to change this one. You can see the 8-inch slip-on flange is now appearing down here at the bottom of my list. I select it, hit close. And you can see I've got an 8-inch slip-on nozzle and flange on my nozzle instead of an 8-inch weld neck. Works just like any other nozzle. If I change this nozzle to a 4-inch, since I didn't include a 4-inch in my catalog, I don't see it in the list. But as soon as I change it to a 6-inch, which I did include, there's my nozzle. Works just like it's supposed to with any other nozzle. So it's a great way to get some other types of nozzle flanges on your nozzles into your catalog. 
you just got to get it in there first with that Python script. Now here's the downside. Pumps out of the box are hard coded with weld neck nozzles. So even if I came in here, you can see I've got this six inch and an eight inch nozzle on there. Even if I came into this pump, the six inch nozzle is available. But as soon as I change to it, you can see what happened there is it basically gave me a really bad result. The reason being is the dimensions for a weld neck nozzle I didn't call out. Uh, it's calling out automatically a weld neck nozzle and those dimensions do not match what it needs for a weld neck nozzle because they don't use the exact, they have some additional dimensions they need for the weld neck nozzle. And you can see here it's got the slope for the weld neck right here. It's not letting me put it on the slip on. So the pumps are a beast of themselves. They're not going to work out of the box. I could create a Python script that would use a slip on flange for a nozzle on the pumps because they have their own Python scripts. It would be very complex and very complicated. I looked into doing that. It would have taken me another hour and a half of this webcast to explain how to do that so I chose not to and it would be very time consuming to create uh, even for anyone else who wanted to do that. The more common way that people are going to be using this is to create their own their own custom pump using by converting the equipment. So what I've done down here this is what I would suggest for most people to do this. Unless you want to really get into some in-depth Python script programming, this would be the fastest way for most people. What I've done here is I took a, a one of them out of the box and I just exploded it. First, I got it to the right, no, right nozzle sizes that I wanted. I exploded it down until by using AutoCAD's explode command to get it down to a 3D solid. So that's what you have down here is this is just a 3D solid where I exploded the pump. And I then used modeling tools here such as subtract and union to I, I added a six inch slip on flange, exploded it down, an eight inch slip on flange, exploded it down unioned it all together to where I had a pump with a six inch and an eight inch nozzle that looked correctly. The advantage though now is I can actually assign the correct nozzle information to this pump. The disadvantage is I can't come in here and just change from a six inch nozzle to a four inch nozzle and it automatically update this pump. I'm going to have to have a pump with the correct nozzle sizes drawn that I convert. But basically what you're going to do here is you, once you get the pump into being a 3D solid, the way you want it to look with the nozzle sizes appearing the way you want it to look, you can then convert this to equipment. The 3D solid, you can convert it to a piece of equipment by simply selecting it, hit enter. I'm going to make this a pump. And then I need to tell it the insertion point. And I'm going to use the same insertion point that they used on the centrifugal pump out of the box. That converts it. I'm going to go ahead and tag it. And so that converted it to a pump. And as you can see, when I click it, there's no nozzle showing up here. But I get the add nozzle emblem down here at this point. And I can add to the suction here. I'm going to place it on the center of this one right here. Turn my ortho on so I get my direction the way I want the pipe to go. And I cannot, you can see here when I convert equipment, I cannot change the location at this point. Now I could change where it's where it's at on this pump, but I don't have all those dimensions to where I can change the length or anything like that at this pump. It's It's got to be drawn correctly. And at this point, I can tell that this is going to be an 8-inch class 150. There's my slip-on nozzle. So I'll add that one and I'll come over here. You can see now I've got my plus sign and I'll add the last nozzle up here for my discharge, go in that direction and I'm going to make it a six inch class 150. 
slip on flange nozzle. So now my pump has the correct information and it will work correctly. Let's just kind of move it to where I can see a little bit better. It'll work correctly and let me draw a six inch piece of pipe, an eight inch piece of pipe off of it. So it's working correctly, it appears correctly, and I'm getting to use the nozzle out of the catalog to have the little correct nozzle information there for the for this particular pump. And that at least lets me get a decent pump. And I likewise can take this pump and save it once it's created to a template. And I'm gonna save this one and call it a pump that's gonna be a centrifugal with slip-on nozzles. And by doing that, I later on can come over here, create a piece of equipment, load that template in, tag it, make this one 1201, and I have a reusable pump that I can use over and over again with the correct nozzles on it as a slip on flange. The only downside, like I said, is I can't change that from a six inch to an eight inch nozzle and it f appear correct uh, with that change on this particular pump. But other than that, one little issue there and I'm hoping that uh, Autodesk will make changes to that. They're aware of that issue also. I'm hoping then at some point in the future, they will make a change to where we can actually change the one out of the box to the correct flange uh, at some point in the future. But for now, that is the way the workaround as far as the pumps, and it's going to work exactly like I want it on any kind of other piece of equipment outside of the pumps out of the box. So the only issue is with those pumps themselves and the way they have them hard-coded to weld neck flanges. So that's basically how I can get those slip-on flanges in my nozzle. Now, what I'm going to show you here in a minute is a link to where you can download this zip file right here. But I just wanted to point out a couple of things about this zip file real quick. Once you download it, it contains two other zip files. One is called a non-registered zip and one is called a registered zip. And there's three readmes. Now, you read the first readme first and it tells you that you have to create the content folder named custom scripts in your, and it tells you how to find that out in case you didn't don't know how to and then it tells you which of the next two readme files to use and which of the script files to use if you have never created this custom scripts folder at all then you can go straight to the non to the registered version zip file and use that readme file and that zip file because you don't have anything to worry about. Inside that zip file are every one of these files right here already created. The script XML is already created with the capital T, so everything's ready to work. You can literally put this one in here. There's three steps to the registered version and it will tell you basically the last three steps, which are basically adding the nozzles to your catalog. If you already have created a custom scripts file and you already have custom scripts in that file that you've already used in the past, then you need to use the non-registered version and that will tell you how to use that one there. And basically you have to register in that one, all you get are the four files I originally started with, which are the four pongs or the five files, the four pongs in the Python script, you've got to register that one with Plant 3D. And after you do that, then it pretty much is the same thing after that point. But you've got to do the initial registration yourself because you have already got some script files in here with some XML files and stuff, and it's got to add to it. So you'll have to use the non-registered version if you've already got some custom scripts in here. Most of you, I bet, do not, so you'll be able to do the registered version, which, like I said, is basically three steps to implement it. And some of this is just information to let you know what gets unzipped and creating a new component in your spec editor. So it goes through everything I just did to create that eight inch nozzle and you can start using it right off the bat. So if all you want to do is out of this particular um, webinar is get some, uh, some 
slip on flanges into your system, then you pretty much just need to get this file downloaded and start using it with the, with that reg, with the registered version. If you want to if you wanted to know more about Python scripts and how you can write your own, pretty, the rest of that webcast will describe it. And you can kind of look through the one that I created to see how to do it because you can create other types of nozzles doing the same method using other types of flanges that are not weld decks, such as maybe the slip on oval and things like that. But that's hopefully gives you a taste of what you can do with Python scripting because you can create equipment and all kinds of things with it um, if you so choose. But that's initially where you can download the files that I used in this particular webcast. So at this time, Let's see if there are any questions. And let me stretch this down to where I can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna to have to pull it off. Let's see if we can make this bigger. So I can see there's a question there. I just, right now I can't read. Okay, now I can read it. What are the B and I dimensions in the flange? The B dimension would be, let me go look at the, let's just see, pull up the Pong itself. So the B dimension is basically the flange thickness right there from the face of flange to the, uh, looks like it's just the flange thickness itself. So L1 is the flange thickness through the hub. B1 would be the flange thickness. And then the I1 is the insertion, how far that pipe basically inserts back from the face of the flange or from the how deep it is that, that pipes inserting into the flange any other questions and let me put this script back on my screen so people can read that so far it looks like there's no other questions We'll give you a second here in case somebody else has one. Let me get this off. All right, if there's no other questions, I'll turn it back over to Ashley. Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, this will conclude our broadcast. If you have additional questions that you think of later, you can simply reply to the confirmation or reminder email you receive from GoToWebinar, and we can get those to Rick or the appropriate party to get your questions answered. Once again, if you could take a few moments to fill out the survey, we would appreciate it. It will just automatically pop up as we close down today. Uh, thank you for attending today's webcast, and have a great day, everybody.